My pleasure as always get to visit with Mr. John Kent, Kent's Firestone, Batesville, Arkansas, with a blue sweater. And my friend, I don't know that I've ever seen you in a blue sweater. Tell me about this pretty blue sweater you have. Both of my red ones are dirty. Okay. I knew there was something. <laughs> I knew I had it. Yeah. You didn't think I noticed that, did yeah, you? Yeah. No, I didn't. Blue sweater. <laughs> nice, though, isn't it? It is beautiful. I'm color coordinated. You are. You look at red, red white, and blue. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how's the consultant at Kent's Firestone? Oh, we're doing well. Uh, had a little winter, though, didn't we? We had a little snow shower Woo! that kind of kept on snow showering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kept people away, but they're coming back now, and we appreciate that. So, uh, but it's um, been a long time since we've had any real winter weather. That was real. And this was real. Yes, sir. This was real. It uh, um, usually never snows and then snows on top of a snow in Arkansas. <laughs> And then it doesn't get down to zero and stay. But, you know, when it warmed up, it all went away, didn't it? Like it normally does. But, but that it was unusual a, to get that much for sure. There's another one on the way, folks. Let so, her come. So don't, uh, don't breathe too easy yet. <laughs> we might, you know, you remember trying to get out of your driveway and you were going... Rrr! Well, don't think just because you can touch the driveway now that you might not need something to get you out. <laughs> In the future, boss might let you off that first snowstorm, but he might not want to miss you the second snowstorm. you got to get out of there, don't you? you got to right. get to work. That's right. That's right. That old and, snow got me. And what can we do between now and then, David? Well, we're gonna, we want to take care of you. We want to make sure that your tires are working. We want to make sure that your car will start. We want to make sure that uh, you're ready to go just in case it snows. And if it snows, you're going to be able to get on that driveway where you can get to work. Yeah. We used to have a motto at Firestone, and they'd give you a little coupon if you bought our town and country tires. You go in ice, mud, or snow, or we pay the tow. Well, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> right. But you still have to go. You got to go. Know? And we do still have the tires that will get you there. You know, you were leaning up on some there just a minute ago yeah. that we've got on sale. And um, we've got all kinds of, of uh, bargain-priced uh, tires right now. And now's the time to get them because in the first time in about two years, two and a half years, tire companies, all of them, have started having increases. A price increase. Yeah, get that because occasionally. rubber costs them more and, and uh, workers cost them more. Transportation and, costs and, more. And transport well, I understand we're being eaten alive by transportation right yeah, now. Right. So, and if you read the newspapers and the business section, you'll see that all the Arkansas trucking companies just reported record profits yes, last sir. year. Yes, sir. Isn't it not so bad, is it? Wonder why. That's yes, exactly right. That's because they're charging more. <laughs> so now would be a time that you want to get your car ready. We're anticipating that spring is going to be here. You're seeing this in March. March is traditionally spring in Arkansas. But we traditionally don't have 8 to 15 inches of snow in February. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, why we hear about climate change. I don't know whether that has anything to do with it because I can remember snows like that a long time. But it's been a long time since we've had any really bad weather. So uh, now is the time to get that good car to see checked Mark out. <laughs> what I was going to say, John... Uh, and by the way, he was doing that at the back of your head. I wouldn't have done that if I was Mark, but that's Mark, and I love him. I know Mark. <laughs> but uh, interesting, the weather person the other night, the weather lady, I guess, said, 
you know, we got uh, 10 inches, but you know, as far as the flood stream goes and the rivers, I said, that's only an inch. And then, you know, when you calculate that, that's what they always say. It takes 10 inches of snow to make one inch of rain. Said, so we're not gonna have any flood issues. And I thought, boy, there's a lot of snow out there. When it melts, it's gotta go somewhere. That's right. <laughs> there's a lot of water. There's a lot of one inches. Yeah, I guarantee you there was. <laughs> yes, sir. Of course, a lot of it is you sink in your yard now if you that's try to exactly walk That's exactly right, you know? exactly Not right. whether folks saw that guy that was behind me there a minute ago. That's Mark House from Roller Crouch Funeral Home. You know what I always say about Mark? What's that? He's a good guy, but he's the last one to let you down. He will let you down in a heartbeat, won't he? Yes, sir. Great guy. Down in the hole. Yes, sir. He's going to let you down there. Down in the hole. You notice that we're not wearing our masks today, but that's just because you and I are socially distancing. And I've had all my shots. And you kind of had the, the, the bug. I, I, I had the bug. I so had you, the bug you're correct. supposed to be exempt for, that's correct. for a little while. But we wear them all the time here, so we encourage you to do that. It got so cold, David, that our free air machine froze up. So we had to put an outer order sign on it. Ronnie was here last night getting the panel back up and the computers all going. He said they were lined up down the street to use right. a free air machine. So don't forget that's there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as it's above Freezing. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you say that because I'm in Newport, Arkansas, and I've got a low tire, so I go down to the place that doesn't have free air. It has the, this. There was. It's, I had to get the dollar air, mm -hmm. and I got nothing out of the dollar air. But it took right. your dollar. It took my dollar, and it ran, but it just wouldn't come out of there. And I thought, well, it's probably messed up. So I went across the street to get the dollar and fifty air. And it obviously was frozen up too because it yeah. didn't work either. So yeah. my, I spent two fifty. I just had to run on a low it, tire. It wouldn't have cost you, cost you 250 to drive to Batesville. Well, mine was froze up, too. See? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> and then you probably wouldn't have made it back to Newport. That's right. <laughs> but now, if you've been having low tires, maybe we need to put you on a set before you go back to Newport. That today. could be true. Yeah, that could be true. Yes, sir. It's been a long time since I put any tires on your truck. That is exactly right. That's exactly anyway, right. Back to the serious stuff. Yes, sir. Because I'm paying for this. You are. It's your time, sir. Yeah, it's I can just show. go on. Can't it's I? your show. Folks, we want to make sure that your car is ready for another one of these events, for the good weather that's coming, and hopefully we're enough along in this pandemic and enough people are being vaccinated and we're going to have some social immunity as long as we continue to practice good principles. So you're going to be able to travel some this summer. We all hope so. That. So we want to get that car ready to ready to go. We want to make sure your pickup truck's got traction for the for the mud that's out there right now, boys. You can go mud right now. So and we've been selling mudders. They they're coming in for those. We we've, we've got a bunch of those on special too. 33, 12, 50, 20s, 35, 12, 50, 20s. Uh, just amazing. Uh, Those are big tires, aren't they, for a pickup they, truck? Yeah, they are, but they, you know. It's not any 22s every now and then? Are yeah. Some 22s? People still yeah. have some 22s? Still have 22s, you know, and they've got, they've got some even bigger than that now. Is that right? Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh. When they really get them up here high. Oh, yeah, yes, Big sir. truck coming down the road, and you go, what are you thinking? It's not only on trucks. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> we've got some chibis out there that <laughs> right. have got those on it. But we just want to make sure you're safe and sound. If you can't pay for it all today, we've got some plans for you. Bridgestone, Firestone, normally no money down, six months no interest, up to 22 months to pay. If that doesn't work, we've got our in-house credit plan with uh, four equal payments, and uh, a lot of people take advantage of that. Sure and the reason that is because, well, golly, for some reason Bridgestone didn't approve them. They don't have enough to pay all that at once, but most people can pay a 25% down payment. And then as the paychecks come in over the next two months, you make equal payments. And folks, we set those payments for you on the day you want them to go through the bank. So it's not us saying, now you gotta have the money on right. the bank, you know. It's when are these next three payments good for you? So that's part of the service that we, we offer to you. Get you ready for for warm weather driving, have you ready in case we have another one of these spurts? <laughs> you can get some free air now. It's it's on and, <laughs> and pumping out there. 
And uh, we just appreciate your business. Thank you for coming to Kent's. And hopefully after 58 years, we know how to do a little of it right, you know? Well, it's a learning process, and uh, you learn a little bit along the way. And, and uh, I think you guys have, have done okay. Y'all have done okay. And don't forget, we still do full detailing at the service station next door. We have no ethanol, gasoline in those pumps. The guys come out and pump your gas for you, clean your windows, check under your hood if you'd like that done. Not many of those places Not left. many of them left. That's, That's right. fixing to say. Not That's many right. of those left, my and friend. Dave and Billy Ray are over there, and, and if you don't get anything else, you'll get a good talking to. <laughs> <laughs> well, pleasure. They, they like helpful. to visit. Yes, exactly they like right. To visit. That's so, exactly uh, right. But anyway, we're ready to serve you and hoping for a good spring. Mr. John Kent, my pleasure to get to uh, come visit with you today. I know that when the weather was bad and I couldn't get up here and I thought, boy, I'd like to see John Kent because I know he's got a couple of good jokes for me. And it's always a pleasure to get to see you and visit with you on this program. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. the White River Area Agency on Aging Report with Mr. Ted Hall, and we're joined by the fine mayor of the city of Newport, David Stewart, and uh, Mr. Ted Hall, we welcome you to our home. Absolutely. Glad to be here. You know, it's uh, after last week we had all that snow. I was talking to David earlier, and uh, you know, he's trying to take care of the folks here in Newport getting <laughs> getting snow. And, of course, everybody wants their street, uh, you know, uh, plowed and all those kinds of things. But uh, I'm sure they did a good job the best they can. But, uh, yeah, that was a serious, uh, serious event there. And uh, twice we had it. And so uh, the point I'm making here, you know, David's taking care of, of business here in Newport. But I'm, we're taking care of Independence County and Jackson County with seniors even during last week. Uh, uh, event with the snow so you know we know what's important that's uh that that's uh, is serving seniors and uh we do it when it's uh, raining or if it's snowing or if it's <laughs> sunshining right. and today is sunshine so that's a good day it's a beautiful day and we wanted to visit with the mayor a little bit about uh, uh, a senior center in, in uh white river area agency on aging with the city of newport with unity health harris medical center a lot of folks came together white to make river this thing planning work. development Absolutely. out of the yeah, you bet and certainly unity they they were a big factor certainly uh, in this deal but yeah and we kind of want to do that because i you know i've thanked david many times but i think also it's just good sometimes to let the people in the area know you got a mayor that uh, helped us get this senior center we had the school district help us get the building and uh, then uh, we, we were laughing again before the show here is that we ran into all kinds of, of situations because the building hadn't been used in 10 years. So as we tried to remodel and do those things, we had different things. But David came to the rescue every time. And so well, we're proud of that, David. Thank you. Man, Thank tell you. us about that process. That's well, the process it's, we it's just another process where with everyone working together, like we've learned to do in the last 15 years or so, uh, everything worked out really well. We, we had a good plan to begin with, and uh, Ted and, and, uh, and, and myself went before the uh, Newport Special School District Board and, and talked to those folks, and they were very supportive. But we had a building there that was an old kindergarten building that hadn't been used in years, and they wanted to do something with it that was, uh, that was proactive for the community. And uh, every, it all it just worked out. Now, like Ted said, we had all kind of problems once we got in that place. Uh, uh, our plans kind of went out the window, and we we regrouped. But uh, working with White River Planning and Development and our our different partners, everything worked out real well. Yeah, the school district, uh, you know, they kind of went over there and evaluated that building, and uh, so uh, we spent, especially uh, I know Richard O'Neill did that. Richard uh, did, yes. uh, helped uh, us uh, do that. So. Again, like David said, we had lots of help, and we needed it. <laughs> well, David, you, uh, the, the mayor's office in itself has so many things that they have to do, but in, in all fairness, the guy or the lady, whomever it may be, sitting in that, in that desk in there, sitting behind that desk, 
has a lot to do with how this city runs, and, and, and you have that responsibility, had it for a long time, and we hope you continue to have it for a, for a long time. But uh, uh, there's lots of hats that you have to wear being the mayor of Newport. Talk a little bit about that. There certainly is, David. And uh, you know my past with the police department, and, and, and that's come in handy, and the fire department. And, uh, but again, just everybody working together, just like last week, you know, I, I had budget things that we were working on, but everything had to stop, and we had to take care of uh, the, what was at, at hand, which was bad weather. And, and we all worked nearly 24 hours a day to try to keep the streets clear and, and to take care of things that were, uh, that were problems. It, it just, you just try to do whatever comes up at the time. It's a different day every day. I still enjoy it. Every day I enjoy coming to work. I remember Mr. Ted asking me about uh, when he, you asked me early on in that process about the, the senior center and the idea, and you said, well, just kind of tell me about your folks, and, and, and I did, and I said, well, you know, the mayor did anything in the world to help you, and he has that, hasn't he? Yes, and you well, even, you helped with, uh, with, with, with some in getting all this done, so, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a good deal, so, and also, you know, the mayor talking about uh, your past experience, you know, I'm a retired school superintendent, mm -hmm. so I used to, th I was thought I'd get through with these snow days, but, you know, I, we're responsible <laughs> for 10 counties, those are 10 different offices that we have, and so, uh, you know, I find myself up early again to, uh, trying to figure out, you know, yeah. uh, how, how we ought to open the office or not, but, uh, the thing about it, David, is that, you know, we have 600 aides that are in homes every day. You know, 600. part of Jackson County, part of them in Batesville, or Independence County, and then our other counties. But, uh, you know, even during this weather, we had people, I've got calls where your, our aides help them in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the idea of Mills on Wheels and all those kind of things, which is vital to the senior network is that somebody is checking with those people that are out there in the countryside or yes, down every day. or every day. And you'd be surprised how our drivers, they pick up on things that somebody may need to check on Miss Sue because she wasn't quite acting right or couldn't get her attention, couldn't nobody was at the door. So you'd be surprised how many times we've had to intervene and uh, get some help for people. So, uh, you know, we, we, we uh, had our HUD, our, our HUD housing. You know, you have to have sidewalks that you got to have those cleared. So, you know, we, mm -hmm. had, we have 188 units throughout our 10 counties, and so we had to make sure that was uh, going on. And then at Eagle Mountain Assisted Living, we actually had our nurses and AIDS actually stayed all night at yeah. Eagle Mountain because, you know, the ice and everything. Mm -hmm. So those people have to be served. Certainly. They have to have their medicines done at a certain time. And the law says they, <laughs> you have so much time. And uh, they have these surveyors come in and they check to see if you do what you, you say you're doing. So, again, uh, it's, a, it's a community type of feeling that we have at, at White River. And working with David and folks like him is and. Even you, David. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, I mean, there's no doubt that White River Area Agency on aging and, and, and right. you know, working with the city of Newport and what the mayor's office does and all yes. those people, uh, it's a good little city. When we need something to happen, David, we get it done in Newport, don't we? We certainly do. And again, I know I say it all the time, but it's the atmosphere of everybody working together and everybody on the same page that has made a difference. No doubt about that. Mr. Ted Hall, always <laughs> my pleasure to get to see you. We welcome you again to the fine city hey, of Newport Greyhound Land. Uh, I'm so, I actually, I'm going to leave here and go to the office and work here for a while. Today. There you oh, go. There you, you go. David Sturt, who's the mayor of Newport, Arkansas, Mr. Ted Hall from White River Area Agency on uh, uh, Aging. And we thank both of you guys for getting together on a beautiful, sunny, non-snowy afternoon. Yeah. It's going to be about 60 to 65 degrees a day. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Welcome, Dr. Doreen Kamoga, the internal medicine specialist at uh, WRMC uh, Internal Medicine Clinic as part of the White River Health System over in Batesville. And uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. We've got to ask you a couple of things. We've got to find out a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us where you're from. Tell us a little bit about your family. Tell us a little bit about your education. Okay. So um, my name is Doreen Kamoga. Uh, and you did an excellent job at pronouncing it. Thank um, you. <laughs> great. Uh, so originally I'm from Uganda. That's where I was born and raised. 
and then um, I came to the United States for uh, education. But um, a little bit of a backstory is um, my husband is also originally from Uganda, and so we met there while we were in college. And then he came uh, to Cleveland, Ohio, to pursue uh, medical education, actually in internal medicine as well. And so then I came to join him. And um, when I came to join him, I pursued um, a master's in public health because preventive medicine has always been very important for me. Very, very important for me. I believe that preventive medicine can make a huge difference, whether it's primary prevention, where you try to prevent a disease from happening, secondary prevention, where you try to prevent a disease from getting, um, you know, from getting worse pretty much. And then tertiary pre prevention where they already have a disease, but you're trying to improve the qual quality of life and to reduce the symptoms of that disease. Um, and so uh, I went to medical school and then um, I came here to Batesville to pursue training in internal medicine residency. I've got to ask you this, and it's, it's kind of a funny question. You go from Uganda to Batesville, Arkansas through Cleveland, Ohio. How in the world do you get to Baseball, Arkansas? It always interests me the, uh, the journey that people take along the way to get to where they are. Right, right. Uh, so in Cleveland, Ohio, like I said, my husband was undergoing training at the time. This is about 10 years ago. And so when he graduated, we decided that we wanted to start a family. And we decided we wanted to raise our family here in the United States. But um, I grew up in a farming community originally in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And so we looked around and um, we found some jobs in Kansas. So he had his practice in Kansas uh, before we actually came here to Arkansas. And I also taught uh, for um, the College of uh, Health Sciences at Fort Hayes State University. So I was teaching for a little bit there. I was teaching uh, epidemiology, which is disease epidemiology, you know, pathophysiology, basically public health. Mm -hmm. uh, like I say, preventive medicine is something that has always been dear to me. And then we had children. Uh, we have two babies. Our, old, our oldest is eight, and then our youngest is four. So at the time we had our oldest, um, her name is Alicia. Um, we love them so much. I both know of them. you do. Yeah. And so um, at the time I thought, you know, I think I'm going to go back. I think I'm going to go back because I think I would make a huge difference if I could integrate the clinical expertise part of it to the preven preven pre prevention expertise part of it as well. Well, when you talk about internal medicine and, and look, internal medicine is a little bit different than primary care or family medicine, what's the biggest difference in internal medicine as such as compared to the others? Right. So internal medicine physicians are specialists who are equipped with uh, scientific knowledge and uh, clinical expertise to treat a broad and comprehensive spectrum of illnesses, specifically in adults from 18 years old, you know, until the continuum of health. I have patients from 18 years old to, I think my oldest right now is 98. And so, um, yeah, so we, we are not limited to one organ system. We are not limited to one specific type of illnesses. Uh, we are equipped to be very good diagnosticians to manage conditions from common, rare, simple, or complex conditions. And um, it's really pretty interesting. I wanna get into asking you about hepatitis C and uh, right. it's real important for patients to understand just exactly what that is. And uh, uh, tell us a little bit about hep C. Okay. So uh, hepatitis C uh, is one of the virus. Is, so hepatitis C is a virus mm -hmm. um, that causes inflammation of the liver. Uh, there's different types of viruses that cause hepatitis. So there's hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. Um, and there's other conditions too, which can cause hepatitis like heavy alcohol use, toxins, medications, and some other medical conditions as well. And so, um, what we are trying to get into here is to prevent that uh, hepatitis, which is basically inflammation of the liver. And uh, this inflammation of, of the liver can progress to liver cancer, liver failure, and multiple other ailments because the liver is one of the vital organs in our bodies. Uh, it helps in um, filtering some nutrients, you know, blood supply, in metabolism of, most of some of the medications that we use 
for patients. It's one of the vital organs, just like the kidneys, just like the heart. And so, but right now, um, there is actually treatment which is much more affordable than in the past years that targets hepatitis C. Uh, now, hepatitis C has different genotypes. You know, there's genotype one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's not a it's not a plan. I guess what I'm trying to tell the patients is that every patient is different. Sure. We have to figure out what genotype they have and then kind of uh, tailor their treatment to, uh, first of all, like where are they at with this infection? You know, because, um, so the interesting thing about hepatitis C, David, is some patients, about half of the patients who get it will clear it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other half of the patients actually will go on to develop that lifelong um, inflammation of the liver or infection. And so it's that it's that 50% that we're trying to target. And um, now there is a cure, you know, directed treatment for some of uh, the genotypes and also depending on the patient profile, like I said, you know, depending on where they are with their disease process. I think this is one of those um, secondary or tertiary prevention areas that really excites me. Well, let me ask you this, and I, ask, I interview a lot of doctors, and it's always interesting to me to find out where along the way, as you were growing up, as you were a young person, when did you decide that, oh man, I, I'd, I'd like to do this, I'd like to be a doctor, and then when did you decide internal medicine? Right, um, so, when I was growing up, like I said, I grew up in Uganda. It's a country which is plagued with a high infectious disease burden. And um, so there was a lot of preventable illnesses. And then when, we, when I moved to Bettsville here in Arkansas, I feel like there's another opportunity where there's a lot of preventable illnesses as well. But um, people were just so desperate when I was growing up and I really always just wanted to help people feel better. I just always wanted to help people <laughs> feel better. And um, my mother also encouraged, encouraged that, you know, through our education and training as her children. So there was a little bit of bias from my parents as well, but I really enjoy, I just enjoy seeing people feel better, you know, and feeling better is holistic, really, David. It's not just about the physical health. There's a mental health part mm -hmm. of it, you know? Um, and so even for the hepatitis patients, regardless of how they acquired it, I want, I want them to know that there's no judgment, you know, with me, it will be just a one-on-one -on -one tailored treatment plan. And we will work with them. And if they are too advanced along, we have gastroenterology specialists and hepatology specialists as well um, that, will, that are on board to help us make sure this is successful. And um, we also have a pharmacy all care pharmacy who is, a, they are very amazing. They're gonna be delivering the medications to the patients on their door. Wow. You know? Yeah, so I'm really excited about this. I think it will make a huge difference. Well, there's no doubt that uh, you talk about making a huge difference that, uh, uh, that Dr. Doreen Kamoga is making a huge difference in Batesville, Arkansas, the White River Health System and the WRMC uh, Internal Medicine Clinic. We, we thank you for your time. If somebody needs to see you, uh, right. Dr. Kamoga, how do we do that? How do we how do we get an appointment to see you? Right. Uh, so I have to look at the piece of paper. I don't have the number memorized, David, but um, they will call the White River Medical Center Internal Medicine Clinic at 870-262-1510. Uh, to schedule an appointment. That is awesome stuff. Well, Anyway, <laughs> congratulations on being in Batesville, Arkansas, and, and uh, uh, we're just, you know, you mentioned about growing up on a farm and being kind of like out in the country. That, that's what you are right here in Batesville and Newport and surrounding areas. It's just good old common people right here. Welcome to the state of Arkansas. Welcome to Batesville and welcome to White River Health System in, in Batesville, Arkansas. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. I appreciate your time. Another great pleasure to get to visit with Paul Strecker at the Dairy Queen and uh, uh, we thought we would bring out some of the hard ammunition today and we want to show you the shrimp basket that we have for a period of time and I'll let him have taste a little sample of this and what you see is 
is about half of what you get in one of these things because he's been eating for about 10 minutes already. But Paul Strecker, how are you? Good. Good, Good to see y'all. Tell, tell us about the shrimp and how long we're going to have shrimp. Oh, okay. We got the shrimp in now. It's an in and out item. It'll be in for about 90 days. It's a, it's a real good popcorn shrimp. Uh, it's real. People look forward each year to having it here at the Dairy Queen, and 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 uh, it's, it's a good item. It's a big item. Lynn and I had to go with the specialty uh, chicken strips today. We thought we would try those, and and once again we weren't disappointed in our chicken yeah. strips at Dairy Queen with yeah. the gravy. Paul, I want to ask you this. Uh, 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 when you talk about the Dairy Queen and, and the Strecker family, kind of give me a, a history of the involvement of, of, of your family in this in this operation. Well, uh, Sharon and I together were in the Dairy Queen for about 29 years, and then uh, but she's been in it about 40 or 41 years because when Roscoe King built the first Dairy Queen there on Harrison Street, she was in high school and she worked for Roscoe. And then when Roscoe sold it to her brother, um, Donald Nance, well then she was still working there. And then when he sold it, we, we, uh, we bought it from, uh, well, there one other person, um, the Blakes, I believe, they, they bought it from Kentucky and they kept it two years. And then, and then we bought it. And, um, and, and then now we've turned it over to our daughter. There you go. <laughs> so it's still in the family. <laughs> it is. That. And, you know, I did notice in the hallway that there's a, a sign there that kind of gives you a chronological deal about when things came along from the Dairy Queen, from the Dilly Bar. Was, I mean, that's an interesting deal. If you, and I know you've seen it if you've been in Dairy Queen before, but if you've never been by here before, come in and look at the history because it says, now, this is when we were established, and this is when the milkshake came along, and this is when the Dilly Bar came along, and this is when we did that. But it's pretty interesting stuff there. Yeah. You know, one of their first food items was a corn dog. Right, yeah. You know, and, and uh, that, that, that's interesting how everything has changed now. And you, used to, uh, hamburgers were our biggest sellers, but now uh, chicken strip is really the, the biggest seller that we have now. Well, the chicken strips are, I say this, and I've said it with Tammy, and I've said it with Sharon for, for many, many years. You can't get a better chicken strip than the Dairy Queen chicken strips in Batesville, Arkansas. Yeah. And they were good. And now, let me tell you, I've, I've eaten at other Dairy Queens. I've eaten around the country at other Dairy Queens. And for some reason, everything I get at the Dairy Queen in Batesville just tastes a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> it must be because of the Strecker family. Yeah, I believe it is. <laughs> yeah, sir. You have your shirt on it says 75 years of, of uh, uh, Dairy, Dairy Queen. Queen. Yeah, established in 1940. So that puts us to what? Uh, that doesn't quite get us up to date, so we've been here a, lot, a little bit longer than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. So, so what else we got going on at the Dairy Queen? We've okay. got some specials that we want to talk about. We got some um, roast near style chicken bites that are fried, and they come in a six or eight piece uh, basket, okay. along with French fries, and they're really good. And then we went over our, our fish and our, um, well, we have fish sandwich, Alaskan cod, and then we got the shrimp basket back. And then we have the mint Oreo blizzard that is on special this month. Wow, and mint it, Oreo. Yeah, so yeah. it's it, it's really good. Yeah, we talked about it last time I missed with you about the specials on the, uh, I like something that's got some chocolate in it, some caramel, and some Oreos, and some Butterfinger, and some Snickers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and anything uh, else. I, conglomeration. Yes, sir. I just like it all. I like it all. But yep. uh, Paul, you guys have been doing it a long time. Of course, uh, uh, Tammy's not able to visit with us today. But uh, anyway, I know that she has taken on this responsibility of, uh, of continuing the great tradition that you and Sharon Strecker have uh, uh, you know, put forth to make this place work. And it continues to do well yeah. today. Yeah, we, we enjoy doing this with y'all, and, and, and we, we appreciate the people that come in here, and, and we try to take care of them, and we try to uh, have a real good food. Paul Strecker told me when he paid for his lunch today, he said, yeah, I have to pay too. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I'm glad I didn't offer to pay for his lunch. I thought he got it free. So, <laughs> Paul Strecker, thank you, my friend. We appreciate you. Don't thank, forget thank about the shrimp basket and the fish sandwich for 90 days. You got it. Thank y'all. Dr. Gavin McDowell, Customized Vision Care, Newport, Arkansas, and we have a wealth of information.
tons of things to get to today. Some of this stuff is important, some of it's not. <laughs> I'm sitting, shaking my head, no. no, no. <laughs> we always have a fun show because we kind of, we put a little humor in, in what we do and uh, my job is to be a professional interviewer and your job is to be a professional optometrist and sometimes we do those things. Sometimes. Yes, sir. Well, you know, the expectation is not quite where it probably needs oh, to no, be. Oh, no, I think we've set the bar pretty low, and we, we <laughs> fail to hit it every time. Every time. <laughs> but we're working on it. We're yes, working yes. on it. We're still filming in the same location in the Village yes. Mall. We're still located here right now. Give us an update on our building. Uh, look, time frame just got an update hopefully by the end of April-ish. Really? So, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and as soon as we get a more solid time frame, I'm going to be sending stuff out to the patient, social media, stuff like that. So, so I know it's a process, and anytime you have a process, and, and we talked about Man. it on our last show, I mean, it, it, it's, it's not a from scratch, but it's a from scratch from on the inside. Yeah, yeah, it's a complete redo of the entire building. So, thankfully, the outside was good. Yeah, there you go. You, you look <laughs> good on been, the outside. It could have been much worse. It could have been a lot better, but it could have been much <laughs> That's worse. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, I want to talk about some eye, eye things today, some not necessarily diseases, but disorders and such. And uh, it's springtime. It's fixing yes. to get with the allergies. Allergies. Al allergies. And allergies. And, or, allergies. and allergies, too, bother us. Uh, what does it do to eyesight? Talk about eyesight and allergies. Allergies, oddly enough, for someone who does not typically have an allergy or say someone oh, I don't necessarily have seasonal allergies I have nine times out of ten I'll see I'll see signs of allergic reactions inside the eye or <laughs> not inside but on the outer surfaces of the eye because typically what allergies present in the eye is, is more of an effect of the the conjunctiva which is just the tissue that covers the white part of the eye and the back side of the eyelids uh, they just get irritated I mean it's it's pollen it's it's uh, animal dander i mean sure. i've i've <laughs> so many patients come in here and and dog, my eyes just bother me i think it's just dry eye and then i'll get to looking and like so when did you get it when did you get a cat <laughs> 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 but I, I mean as far as it affecting eyesight it's more of effect of the comfort of the eye which in turn causes the eye to be either feel more dry or water a bunch and that will affect eyesight. How do, you, how do you fix that besides get, rid, besides of get rid of the cat? Yeah, besides get rid of the cat. If you're really attached to the cat. <laughs> right. uh, I tell most just lubricate your eyes like crazy right. with lubricating drops, over-the-counter lubricating drops, not, not red eye relief drops, not uh, allergy drops, just a lubricating drop that's available readily over the counter and use them like you're going to win something. I mean, you can't overdose on those things. Is that right? Just, as much as you can there, get right? in there, get it in there, and that will keep most of the irritants out of the eye and keep them much more comfortable. Now, if it gets to a point where you want to dig your eyeball out with a rusty spoon, it's itching badly, then, yeah, we need to probably throw a, a prescription medication at it or something like that. But, eh, lubricating drops are usually easiest. I want to say congratulations to you. I know we did a show probably six months ago, eight months ago, and we talked about the uh, I, I guess it's the state of Arkansas or somebody is yeah. doing some changes and upgrading some services that might be available uh, and you had some you know certifications that you had to get through you got through those yeah. and, and kind of give us an update on what that was what it is and what it does okay well uh, generally speaking this the scope of practice is expanded in Arkansas and allowing us to be allowed to do some of the procedures we were trained to do even myself years ago in, in school in optometry school and uh, those are laser procedures involving usually glaucoma mm -hmm. uh, as well as some uh, well, let's call it superficial surgeries of the eyelid uh, and injections of the eyelid stuff like that but um, let's put it this way I'm now considered an advanced procedure optometrist we're stopping a little bit short from calling it a optometric surgeon but okay. uh, but yeah there's a lot of things I, it's just I wanted to I want to be to the full extent of practice that I can be sure. and allow that that uh, that knowledge to the patients that I have now mind you some of these procedures I will likely never right. do in practice right. either because the patient base I have doesn't really require it or whatnot but just having the knowledge of knowing what to tell the patients to expect if I have to send them to somebody for something I can't fix. 
Have you thought about getting a, maybe a certification on professionalism and in, in, in televi television interview where you were the interviewer and kind of maybe change jobs and you I, I actually have you thought I, about that? <clears throat> I have thought about it. I was going to just watch a TED talk on it, but right, yeah. it was really long so it was more of a Theodore talk and I just didn't want to sit through it. <laughs> 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 well, let me tell you what, uh, the certification to do this job right here that I've got, uh, is, is I am well trained and well versed you, on uh, years of experience. experience. There you experience. go. School of hard knocks. School of hard knocks. Uh, just a couple of funny things, anything out of the ordinary other than like you like me, I noticed uh, uh, when you're doing nothing, you like to do nothing. Oh, I like, I love to do nothing. And hate the interruption. Not a fan of that last minute phone call, hey, you want to go do this? No, no, I don't. I want to do exactly what I'm doing right now, which is nothing. <laughs> now, the, I, I don't get wrong. I like to get out and do fun things, but I don't want to. It is a, it's an ordeal for me to mentally prepare to be social. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes all the know. sense in the world. I, hey. I like people, but I don't. I like them in small doses. There you go. Which is why I see patients one at a time. Yeah. Well, you see. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you talk about you know changes or whatever, and, 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 and being nothing, and you actually have a plan. I mean, there's a. There, I mean, the that plan to do nothing is, is that is, is a plan. That's a good plan. It, it may, that's, that's a good I tell plan. my wife all the time as she walks through the living room. If I'm sitting doing nothing, she's like, "You going to do anything all day?" No, this is what I had planned to do. This is. <laughs> this was. What, I, I, let me look at my schedule. Yeah, I'm right where I need to be. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Check it off my list. Well, it's good that when you get to the office that you always have something to do. Always. You guys are busy. You guys We are, are and busy. I love being busy. Yeah. Love it. Just, uh, I know that uh, uh, you came here how many years ago now? Fifteen. Fifteen years. I mean, 20, uh, 2006. Was when I came. Man, a lot. Fifteen years in one location. You still got some of the same customers. I do, I do, <laughs> and I and I love it. And here's and I will. I'm I'm going to say this now. I want, I want everybody to know this. I'm horrible with names. Horrible okay. with names. We had a young lady uh, pop up to the door uh, the other day during lunch. Whenever I was working with some other people, anyway. Uh, so anyway, young lady comes to the door. She's wanting to pick up her glasses that have been ordered in. I'm like, okay, hold on one second, sweetie. I, I've been seeing this woman since the day I started here. And you go blank. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I just feel so embarrassed because I don't want to ask them their name because yeah. I, they know I've been seeing them <laughs> for 15 years. And I'm like, oh, God, I cannot remember her name. It happens. So then I, that's when I run to the staff like, Young lady, y'all help me out. A, yeah, go go ask her name real quick. <laughs> Somebody knows. So, her. anyway, that is my that, that is a very huge character flaw that I have. I and I will when people introduce themselves to me first time if they're a new patient first time I uh, talk to them, I'll ask them their name in the entire exam. I'm using their name. name that's what you're I supposed try to do. and I try to I mean I try to set that and hook. It no, it don't work. No, no. It doesn't work for me because I no. know that's what you're supposed to do, and you try it, and then when you get through, and you said that you've said Randy 97 times, you look at you, oh, and, say, yeah. and you say Robert, good to see you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a name Randy. Yeah. <laughs> so, anything else that we need to discuss today on this fine program that we do? You need to get your own program. You know what I mean? You the think so? The customized vision care program on on on, on Facebook. Oh, we've already got that. We oh we do. Yeah, we got that. The ratings are good too. All right. The ratings are good. I I'm still waiting on my friend. royalty check on that, but that's fine. I mean, is the network not going to call me? Bob? Are you not sending the check? <laughs> I'm pointing at Linda Black here. <laughs> and she's looking behind her to yeah, see who she's pointing. There's nobody behind you, hon. <laughs> it's just you. You're the check writer. <sighs> Always my pleasure to get to come to Customized Vision Care in the Newport Village Mall to visit with uh, Dr. Gavin McNall. Our phone number is 870-523-3333. If uh, you need our services, we're here for a little while. And then, as he mentioned earlier, we may be across the street. Yes. In the next few weeks. Yep. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Robert.
Medical Center, and it's always a great pleasure to get to meet new people, and uh, Dr. Rick Toothacre has joined us, and uh, it's always our pleasure to get to uh, talk, interview, and uh, put your face with a name and tell everybody all about you, and we'll let you start out by telling us a little bit about you, where you're from, tell us a little bit about education, and uh, how you got to Cersei in Newport, Arkansas. Sure. Um, I'm originally from New England, uh, from Maine, and Trained in the Northeast, uh, you know, did medical school at Dartmouth and training in New York and Maine, where I'm from, and uh, been practicing for 12 years and you know, a few different places, uh, but for the most part, been pretty consistent in uh, practicing in more rural-based uh, practices, kind of more general community oncology, uh, and again, you know, in part because my interests are, you know in the outdoors and activities and what have you and so that's been in part why I've targeted those particular places to live um, and you know I think why do I choose that particular you know in addition you know, I've targeted places to practice where kind of the quality of, of the um, resources to be able to practice are, are where I need them to be so you know that I think is historically been the challenge uh, to find you know more rural based practice where you don't compromise quality and so um, so that can be tough um, but I think you know with with unity I've found that kind of that happy medium to be able to live where I want to live but also to provide the quality care that that I expect from myself very interesting that a man from Maine would end up in Arkansas and uh, but it's a great story and uh, let's talk a little bit about your family. Did you bring family with you here? I did. Uh, I'm married, uh, five children, uh, oldest is in college, so four with us. Um, and they've acclimated very well, um, making friends, enjoying school, you know, at least when they're in it. Uh, so, so everything so far has been very, very good. You mentioned oncology, and you're an oncologist, and people will ask from time to time, they say, most people will say, what is an oncologist? And I said, well, that's a nothing. It's an oncologist. <laughs> what it is. Tell us exactly what that is. Tell us what that training is. Uh, because most people don't know. Sure. You, I mean, kind of as a step back, um, you know, oncology is cancer, treatment of cancer. And uh, most oncologists in this day and age also do hematology, which is kind of dealing with the blood. And so especially... Uh, patients that are coming for blood issues, you know, they hear they're seeing the oncologist and get petrified, but, you know, we do both. And a lot of blood problems are benign and not necessarily cancer related. So, so for the most, so I do both of those things. Um, but, you know, really it's just evaluation and management and treatment of cancer is what that word encompasses. Why being a doctor and why being an oncologist? Where along the way did you decide, man, this is something I think I want to do? Sure. Um, you know, going back in time, you know, my interests were, you know, as a, as a kid and growing up, I, I just, I liked science and I liked that was my particular passion in life. And uh, in being a physician um, and taking care of people, um, certainly fit the science part of things for me. Um, and then beyond that, as far as oncology specifically, my own family history was uh, my uh, father's side of the family, both of my grandparents had cancer and my father did as well. And so yeah, I personally got a chance to see um, a variety of oncologists. And to be frank about it, I saw people that I thought that did a good job, and then I saw people I thought didn't do a good job. And so you know, I think oncology is a unique practice in that um, it, you know, it's, it's a different relationship with the patient, and I think there's, there's a, a, just a different level of interaction and being able to hopefully display compassion and care for people in what most people probably define as the worst possible diagnosis. And, situation they can deal with and so you know again when you deal with it personally I think it hopefully makes you a little bit more able to have empathy and and provide that sort of care um, so that's why I got into it. Well I think we as human beings when we hear the word cancer I mean we first think worst thought scenario that you can have and it's a 
you need people out there that uh, can kind of give you some reassurance that, you know, sometimes it's not the worst case scenario, yep. and that's what you do. Yes. Talk yep. a little bit about uh, 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 people in general and, and, and the successes that you have and how people feel from the fact when they first come to see you and they go, oh my goodness, this is not going to work, and then, oh my goodness, it did work, and, and what, how that makes you feel and how, obviously how it makes them feel. Yeah, I guess I see myself as, you know, to some degree, a counselor in the sense of having the having the background information to work with, you know, in the sense of making the diagnosis, getting all the pertinent information to help assess prognosis, just mean, you know, what are our goals of treatment? Is it to cure? Is it to try to control disease? What are the best treatment options to facilitate that? And then there definitely are times where uh, a person has a situation where they need, you know, kind of the next level of care. You know, and I think that's one of the good parts about Unity is having that Mayo f Clinic affiliation. It really allows for me to have access to subspecialty physicians that only focus on rare, less common cancers and are doing research, uh, clinical trials, where if that's what's necessary for the patient's care, we have pretty direct access to that as opposed to putting in a referral and waiting a month for them to eventually get, get a foot in the door. Um, so, you know, so, so it's basically trying to guide people through that whole process based on the information that I have and trying to give them the best information to make those decisions. Because ultimately, you know, the decisions that people make on how to manage their, their cancer or otherwise, um, you know, they have to live, you know, usually what I tell patients is you have to live with those consequences. So you have to be part of that decision making, um, you know, as far as, you know, what, how to treat something and, and how aggressively or unaggressively and where to have that treatment done. Well, we appreciate you taking time to join us, Dr. Toothaker, and uh, uh, we welcome you to Unity Health uh, Harris Medical Center in Newport, Unity Health uh, overall, and uh, uh, obviously a great addition to us here in Newport, Arkansas, and I guess you come, how often do you come here? Uh, right now, every other week, um, yeah. you know, as time goes on, that may be more frequent. So. There you go. Well, we appreciate him taking time to join us, and, and uh, what a pleasure. I, I enjoy visiting with the folks at Unity Health Harris Medical Center. These are good folks, and you'll enjoy it. A guy from Maine in Newport and Searcy, Arkansas is mind-boggling to me, but we welcome you, <laughs> our fine friend, to our fine cities. Well, thank you. I appreciate it.